This looks, for all intents and purposes, at the beginning, looks just like this, doesn't it? You can see I've got two sides, and I have an angle, right? And I want to find an angle. So I'm going to have a pair of a side and angle, and another pair of side and angle. I can use the sine rule, okay? So I begin just by writing my formula. Okay, I'm going to go sine A on A, sine B on B, and then I start to fill this guy in. Everything's business as usual so far, okay? What's the one that I want? I'll write that first. That's DFE over here. So sine of DFE. What's the side opposite? It's seven, you can see it there pretty clear. And so that gives me an indication of where I go next, which is the other angle, 42, and the last remaining piece of information, namely five, okay? Everything's still as it was before. I'll just take that seven over to the other side. So now you have something to pop into your calculator, right? Can someone give me and read out maybe four or five decimal places for what you're getting on the right hand side over there. 0 0.5353. 5353, how convenient. Okay, so just pause there, right? That looks good. I'm at this line here, right? I'm pretty close, right? So let's now hit shift, do your sine inverse, right? And I'm going to get an angle that I expect for DFE, right? Uh, give it to me with some decimal places and then we'll round off. Can someone give me some, uh, maybe two or three decimal places? 59.518. 518, dot, 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 dot. Okay, so we know what that approximates to. Uh, approximately, and we'll just go nearest degree. Okay, now again, pause, right? We'll do what we did over here. Does that answer, like this answer, does it, um, does it make sense? Does it look like what you'd expect? What do you think? I'm trying to say whoops, that this guy over here is 70 degrees, right? Question mark. I think it looks fine. It looks okay, right? We've got smaller angle, smaller side, bigger angle, bigger, bigger side, no problems, okay? Well, there is one tiny little problem, okay? I want you to, for a second, forget all of these triangles that I've just drawn, okay? I want you to imagine if this was the question that I gave you, Right, just, just that line there. You remember we started off looking at this guy? Okay, it's like some trig ratio of some number. Then I said, how about this one? Some trig ratio of some number. Now for both of these guys, we went through this process like 10 minutes ago. You gave me two answers for both of them, right? Two answers. And of course you get two answers because you draw the graph draw the graph, you get two answers. So therefore, if I'd given you this question, I know it has some icky decimals in it, but that's no big deal. It just makes the angle bigger or smaller. If I give you this question, you ought to expect not one answer, but two. There are always two turning up, or sometimes there are even three. Okay. So hold on a second. Let's, um, let's use quadrants now this time, because we should practice using all of them. Here's my, here are my quadrants. Okay. Sign is... Yeah, yeah, I got that wrong. Five three five three. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, what is it? Uh, nine three six seven. Oh, nine. It's it's a completely different decimal. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Um, is this angle still? Yeah. Yeah. For a different. It's for a, yeah. Okay. Can you tell me what it was again? Nine. Nine three six seven. Okay. Thank you. All right. Someone else should have picked that up. That's all right. No problem. Okay. We have it right now. Now, still the same principle I'm about to apply will be the same. Sine is positive, isn't it? You see that? It's not a negative number like this. Okay. So which quadrants am I in? First and second. First and second. One, two. 70 degrees, which answer is that? First. That's the first quadrant angle, right? That's the first quadrant angle. So I should be expecting a second quadrant angle. How do I find second quadrant angles again? 180 minus. I take the, um, the supplement of this angle, right? So not only 70, but 180 take away 70. It's just like I looked at before. You can see how these skills fit together in, uh, in sequence. I actually have 70 degrees or 110. That's the supplement, okay? Now, you look at this, right? I said 70 degrees, question mark. Could 110 degrees also work? Now, on my diagram, it doesn't look like it could work, but you guys know all the time, like every diagram you see in like a test or in the textbook, they're like, not to scale, not to scale, right? Just use, the, just use the measurements, the actual numbers that are on there, and the shape of it is just a general guide, 
Okay? Now, if it were 110, what would this triangle actually look like? Mm. 110 is um, an obtuse angle. Well, it's a it's second quadrant, right? So it's going to look something like this, I guess. Something more like that. Okay? Ish, right? So this actually works. It's totally plausible, right? And so being the fact that it's kind of ambiguous whether it's this angle or that angle, right? It could be either of them. What we call this thing, you can put this in big, big colorful letters, right? This is called the ambiguous case for the sine rule. The sine rule is really cool because it shows us this relationship between the sides and angles, right? You make one longer, you get the other one. Sorry, if you make one bigger, you get this one longer, or vice versa. Okay. But it has this little kind of trap door in it, right? Because of the way sine looks, the curve, it looks like this, okay? So if we ask ourselves, when is this true? You draw your line through and you get one, two solutions, okay? Sine will give you those solutions and they both work, okay? So it's ambiguous. Right? Therefore, your default should be to say, all right, I'll get one answer. It could be the other one. It could be the other one, so I should just write that down for sure. It could be either. Right? 